two minutes past seven. You're listening to Same Old Radio Show on Swat ninety nine point nine FM. How was today for you? It was a little bit cloudy here in Blacktown. Nice and cool for me, but right now it's around about twenty six point two degrees. Will that make a difference? Point two degrees. <laughs> Tonight's show is going to revisit Super Typhoon Haiyan, known in the Philippines as uh, Yolanda. Our guests for this night are Lions Club of Blacktown's Paul McInnes and Richard Hoskins. We're going to talk about their efforts to raise funds for Super Typhoon survivors in Tacloban City. How are you, Paul? How are you, Richard? I'm good, thank you, Mitchell. All right. <laughs> Now, um, this night's music is from Same Old Radio Show's charity CD, which I believe the club's going to try and sell. We'll try and sell some. We'll try and sell some. And with a charity CD, it's called uh, We Will Never Leave You, and it's a collection of original works from musicians from around the world. And if you want to know more about it, please visit uh, ithappened.com.au. Sorry, it happened.com forward slash charity CD. The track you're listening to in the background at the moment is called Say It's the theme song by uh, given to us by Butch Montserrat at Montserrat Music Works. It's called Oi Come Over. Now, but the Lions Club of Blacktown is going to have a Valentine's Day and Filipino fiesta and dance in aid of the Typhoon Haiyan victims. But they're inviting you to join them for a night of fun, dinner, dancing, entertainment and raffles. And there will be lucky door and best dress prizes. Now, Paul, can you tell us a bit more about it? Um, look, this really started as a joint venture with Borkham Hill Flying Club. We primarily want to raise money, in this case, for the Philippines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Graham Utley, who's from Borkham Hill Lions, had visited... The Philippines was really yep. taken back by the poverty and the lack of infrastructure and the people still living in temporary accommodation with the typhoons. Mm -hmm. So he approached us to help him raise the money. Oh, okay. Now, Richard, how long have you been with the with the club, with the Lions Club? I, I've been with the Lions Club just over a year, and I got involved uh, after meeting uh, Paul and Riza at a fundraiser for Typhoon High and. Uh, last year that was held over at Arnett's. Mm, um, Paul, what do you do with the Lions, Cl Lions Club? What, uh, what's your title? Well, this year I'm president <laughs> of the Blackdown City Alliance Club. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what uh, what your title is, is it? No, just <laughs> as long as you do, the main thing is to help people. And Richard, are you a soldier of I, the Lions I, Club? I, I'm, just a, I'm just a working bee. <laughs> You're just a working uh, bee. I, I say just, but that's <laughs> everybody's key role in the Lions Club is to do for our community and to help others in need. <laughs> yeah, the whole the... object. We're a service organization. We're really working to help people. <laughs> oh, good, good. Now, the first track we're going to play is called uh, Yolanda Aftermath. This was done by Christian Bong Ramelow of Darwin. Darwin's ancestry is uh, really from that region of the Philippines that got hit. He's from, not quite from Leyte Island, but the one behind it. Excuse me. Um, the area called Bogo uh, in uh, that part of the Visayas before you hit Leyte, and he was so struck by it. And he's an artist in his own right, and he wanted to express his feelings. And one way he could do it was through this. Let's have a listen to Yolanda Aftermath. <laughs>
nine minutes past seven. It's 25 and a half degrees. Is it getting any, is it getting any cooler in here? Or? Not to me. No, not to <laughs> me. I'm still sweating. <laughs> Just going to read about this. Uh, some other mob actually is doing some uh, high-end benefit concert. Now, this is called... <coughs> This is called the Countdown to Recovery. Sorry about that. It's a high-end benefit concert, which will be held on Tuesday, the 26th of May, 2015, at the factory in Marrickville. The Philippine-born Juan Gonzalez, guitar player, was approached by all-star band leader John Paul Young last year after John Paul heard of the superstorm that struck the Philippines. Juan and life partner Mandy Duggan, together with CPUAAICI business manager Benjamin Benji Alvarez, they presented the idea to Benji's Alumni Association of an Australian Music Industry Legends concert for the benefit of the survivors of Superstorm High and now in the Philippines as Yolanda. The result is a lineup of Aussie music greats with John Paul Young and his lead guitarist Juan Gonzalez of the All Star Band. Now, there's also going to be Angry Anderson of Rosa 2, Russell Morris, Glenn Shark of the Little River Bar Band, Damien Leith. Uh, soul blues and funk band dynamic hypnotics along with oscar jimenez and Ariane nominee afro-colombian rock and roots outfit watusi the charity gig is to be hosted by vivid sydney creative director ignatius jones um, ignatius jones is actually from the philippines he came here around about um early 60s i think uh, incidentally Ign ignatius was co-founder of the band jimmy and the boys a shock rock and new wave band from the late 70s, early 80s. And more artists are expected to join the Benefit concert. And for more information on the concert, please visit countdowntorecovery.com or email inquiries at countdowntorecovery.com. Now, for what the Lions Club is doing, it doesn't matter who's there. You know what I think? The most important people are the people that's actually going to the benefit isn't it it's, it's it's not the stars themselves it's not you it's, it's not me now when's the Valentine's day and filipino fiesta oh it's this saturday on the 14th of february uh, be held at bowman hall at 6 p.m uh and that that's just not a fiesta per se it's a it's a time for us to <coughs> show what it really means at camaraderie whether uh, we're Filipino, we're Australian, whatever our nationality is. Yep, uh, yep. It's about helping others. And that's really why, as you said, it's the people that comes and gives. Uh, and in return, they get a good traditional Filipino meal. Wow. Now, uh, what should we come dressed as? Well, you have a choice. <laughs> One is in there two sections. One is masquerade. Mm -hmm. for m more to meet the needs of the younger Australians that would like something like that and also okay. just a Valentine's Day theme for primarily the Filipinos. All right, so this should appeal to everyone. So we'll try to appeal to both ages. sides. Yeah. There'll be prizes for best dressed in both categories. What if I came over as the Incredible Hulk? That's okay too. We we, we don't care what you come as. We're, we're having themes because that's <laughs> uh, just bring some unity amongst certain groups of individuals. Uh, the important thing is that people come and they support the calls. And we'll have entertainment as well, not just the dinner. We're dancing, we have singers, oh, you know, good, we have good. performers. You're going to have a live band or anything like that? Um, we, no, we've got a DJ, we haven't got a live band. Oh, good, good, good. Now, who can they contact if they, they want to know more? First person on contact is probably my wife, Risa McGuinness. <laughs> Hello, Risa. <laughs> Risa dot McGuinness. M C I W N E S dot at, at gmail dot com. Does she have a phone number that people can reach her on? Sure. Um, 0413 <laughs> 758-979. What does Graham Utley do with uh, the Lions Club? He's another contact over there. Graham's been with Lions, I think, for twenty or thirty years. Very, very long term. But from the Borkham Hills Lions Club. Okay, so, so Graham's in the Borkham Hills Lions Club. And this is a uh, the Lions Club of Blackton and Bochum Hills uh, gig. Now, can we ring Graham as well? Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, <laughs> his number, Graham's number is 0414 666 305. And 
You can also reach him on email Graham Utley Graham dot Utley at yahoo.com.au I've got some questions here. The, the millions of dollars of overseas aid was sent to the Philippines for Superstorm Haiyan. Now, what prompted the Lions Club of Blacktown and Bochum Hills to raise funds for Haiyan? I, I, I guess Graham Utley, who visited the Philippines and visited this particular region, Taco Bayan, pre uh, Typhoon Haiyan and after uh, <coughs> working with, with the Lions on some projects, has really come to us as a joint adventure. And, uh, highlighted the needs that still remain undealt with because the economy still isn't uh, recovered and there's still individuals living in temporary housing and uh, many many of those individuals were fishermen who now cannot fish in the shallow waters and mm -hmm. have no employment so their children have no food so you know that's one of the things that we'll be trying to do is address some of those issues. Now, you partly answered my next question of who the recipients of the money will be raised. Now, who actually are you giving it all, to over there? Yeah, all the money we raise will go to the Tuckleban Lions Club. Uh, and why we do that is Lions from the world take nothing for overheads. Every cent. That's under, wonderful. Under our constitution, all Lions work for nothing. We pay to be members. Mm -hmm. And every cent we raise, we must give back to the public. All right, because um, I know some of these civic groups, and even here in Sydney, they have a lot of overheads. But I also know a particular one person over in Alexandria that services, when I mean service, he's not associated with anyone at all, but it's out of his own accord. He rings up corporates, corporations around Australia, and sends to uh, disasters all over the world. So last time, I think you might have known about this, uh, Richard. We sent around about eight containers. Just help that's pack. Just help pack, and he gets nothing out of that. That's right. That's that's wonderful. Now, what projects do the Lions Club of Blackton and Bochum Hills hope to materialize when the money is turned over to the Lions Club of Tekloven? Okay, that's quite a diverse needs. Mm, mm. They'll be doing things like buying building materials to build houses, <coughs> buying tools to enable the locals to build houses, buying things like fish nets so the fishermen mm -hmm, can mm -hmm. go work again, buying books for the schools. So we're trying to rebuild the basic infrastructure so that people can eventually be self-sufficient. If you just send aid, you send money. Next year you need to send more aid, more money. If we can get the people and their infrastructure working and be self-sufficient, build their economy, long term we're all better off. That's right. It goes with the old saying, um, give a man a fish, he feeds for a day, give, teach him how to exactly. fish. And yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's livelihood's going to be one of them. You know, help them help themselves, I guess. Now, how much does the club expect to send to the Lions Club we, of the we, we At this point, we're... Uh, our, our original goal was fifteen to twenty thousand mm -hmm, dollars. At this mm -hmm. point, we're on track somewhere between ten and twenty thousand uh, dollars to to send over. Well, that's good. I guess any amount yeah. that you can send over, and like you said, every single cent's going to be there. There's practically no overhead. Well, there's virtually none. Even when we all go and donate the money, we pay our own travel, our own accommodation, uh, and okay. that's lines everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing special mm -hmm. that we're doing. The next track I'm going to play is called Black Saturday, and <coughs> excuse me, oh, this cuff just want to get the air's too dry in here. <laughs> Sorry about that. The next track is called Black Saturday, and it's by a, a Blacktown local. Um, his nickname, so his what do you call it? His handle is T Gun, and his name's Tommy Bauer. Now, Black Saturday. Uh, a few years back in Victoria, we had Black Saturday. Uh, this massive fires in Victoria and I chose this song and I asked Tommy if he wouldn't mind giving us this song for charity mainly because of the parallels that I see in between the two events one is by fire one is by water but at the end of the day the devastation is the same and one one key thing that I noticed also was that we are pretty much set up for disasters we can we have some sort of control well over in the philippines they don't have that uh, let's listen to tommy tell us hi about his uh, feelings about black saturday 
Australians are used to natural disasters. They're a fact of life in this country, but we've never seen anything like the devastation inflicted on country Victoria. Victoria's bushfire menace has returned. The toll so far is overwhelming. As well as the many lives lost, the flames have so far claimed more than a thousand houses. At least 130 people dead, 750 homes reduced to ashes. The death toll now stands at 189, but in the coming uh, weeks and even months, that figure is expected to climb towards the 300 mark. It's feared the already horrendous death toll could double. I fear things will get worse before they get better. Check me out. Here we go again. My pad, making love to my pen. Send the message of love to every victim or friend who got caught up in the drama on the 7th of Feb. Black Saturday, a day we will never forget. 208 lay dead, lest I heard still counting. Just imagine all the screaming, the burning and shouting. No one stood a chance, not a word of a warning. Kids dead on the news, what a hell of a morning. My heart bleeds for them, the tears still falling. Can we turn the hands to time and maybe warn them? Running from the flames as they face Nick death. Not knowing they bound to take the very last breath. Fest the clock tick tock, the bodies just drop. Each block tree top. When will this stop? It's a giant ashtray. I try to look away, but I can't. So I mourn and pray for Black Saturday. As the world is prepared for being another problem, another problem, another problem. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> another day, another problem. Damn, how can we solve? Can we solve? Can we solve? Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's hard. Another day, another drama. Let's go to the source. From tsunamis to flames to floods up north. Life is something so special. It's something to cherish. It's like a stab to the chest, watching everyone perish. Those that pulled through lost it all in this event. Now they sleep in the tent with no option to rent. If I played that position, I don't think I could cope. Holding on to hope, like they're clutching a rope. Flames burn through the streets, some as quick as a flash. Houses turn into fire, fire turns into ash. Makes me think all ain't with us, he just turning his back What's the reason Mother Nature put a hole in the map? As for cowards lighting trees, I got something to tell I hope you rot in a cell, if not then burn up in hell I sit and wonder will these tears ever come to an end Sometimes I wish what was real would somehow pretend As the world is prepared for being another problem, another problem, another problem Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's hard, it's hard <laughs> another day, another problem. Damn, how can we solve? Can we solve? Can we solve? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard. I live in Pine Ridge Road, King Lake West. We lost our home. I lost my car and everything. My backpack. <laughs> Three minutes past seven. You're listening to the same old radio show on SWAT 99.9 FM. But that was one of the striking things. The last few lines of that song. Now everything's gone for a lot of people. It's literally everything's gone. Uh, nothing but just maybe a few <laughs> tree stumps or whatever they've got left. Now it's been over a year now since the fateful 8th of November in 2013. And it's only recently that the Philippine government has approved certain works to go ahead. How do overseas aid, like the inter-club collaboration between Lions Blacktown and Welcome Hills and Lions Stock Club, and help the locals? I know we've mentioned this before, but in other ways. Look, it's hard to come. A lot of aid through government departments, and we hear a lot of <coughs> stories about what does and doesn't happen. That side doesn't concern us, but we do it through the Lions Club, the clubs have their charter they must follow. They are also governed 
by our district governors and our multi-district people. Mm -hmm. so we'll give the money to Takbaban, guarantee it will go to the people, but there's higher up groups in the Philippines that will ensure that that happens. All right, I guess um, to be more specific, uh, what will the club do? Do they hand out the money in cash or you mentioned building materials yeah, before? Yeah, we'll, we'll do a cash transfer to the Lions Club in Tuckerman. Ah, okay, right. all right. They will then handle how it's handed out to people mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. may, as I said, buy building materials, buy tools for, for the locals. There's still thousands of people there in temporary shelter. Mm -mm. There's still children that are starving. Has the Lions Club of Tacloban identified as a current project for Hein? Have they done? Have they mentioned anything to you? What their current project is? We we we, we know we have plenty of uh, kids there, and uh, in the past they ran successful feeding programs uh, to ensure the school kids had <coughs> nutritional meals available to them as they learned, and were. Uh, at this point, they intend to run another one of those school feeding programs, and they're going to buy, uh, as Paul said earlier, they're going to buy equipment to help try to get the locals back into the economy of fishing and other things. Mm, this may sound like a cynical question, but the people of Tacloban seem to have recovered. Why should clubs and individuals continue to help? I don't think they have recovered. We've uh, You see a lot of photos of what the good people have done, but you don't see the thousands and thousands of people without a house, li living at rough. The children are going to school that aren't eating. Yes, so media is not actually able to cover every individual detail. No, yeah. and uh, it'll take 10 or 15 years before that area gets back mm. to anything like what it was before. Yeah, and, and we're not just saying 10 or 15 years because that's what we expect, but that's because that's a trend all over the world well, where disasters yes. yeah, happen. Disasters. It would take that long. Everyone looks at disasters when they first happen. Mm, and mm. the world sends millions of dollars and millions of people. Some's wasted, some goes to good use. But six months later, everyone forgets about it. And really, that's when the true rebuilding needs to start. Mm, mm. Six months, a year, two years later. Uh, that's good. Now it's 7:26. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna play this track. It's called Two Bucks, and this is by another Blacktown band called The Company. Now, Two Bucks. Now, as a, as an aid, it may sound like nothing, but every single dollar counts, I suppose. Now, this track is actually a love story, but she's this guy saying, "Now, if I had two bucks, I'll spend it all on you, go." But let's change the idea of this uh, if you guys have two bucks all oh, listeners come to the lions club if you have two bucks come and help here we go with two bucks if i had two bucks in my wallet i'd spend it so long you girl i'd spend it so long if i had two bucks in my wallet i'd spend it so long you girl i'd spend it so long if I had two bucks in my wallet, I'd spend it all on you, girl. I'd spend it all on you. If I had two bucks in my wallet, I'd spend it all on you, girl. I'd spend it all on you. Spend it all on you. Yeah, it's true. I would travel to the moon, girl. I would even try it with the helium balloon, girl. So good to be loved. That's all I want is you, girl. Arms around me and just drift the way it yeah, drift the way to that melody. It's okay. You're loving it's a whole lot of tempting. Tempting my pocket, it's a little bit of empty. Baby. It just seems so simple. I mean, you know, insult. Honey, can you let me spend it on you, girl? You're the glamour and fame, don't come close to compare to you. You're not to look out, I can say. If I had two bucks in my wallet. Spin it all on you, girl. I'd spin it all on you. If I had two bucks in my wallet, I'd spin it all on you, girl. I'd spin it all on you. Spin it all on you. My money don't fall, my money jingles, my money's on a double Z. 
All on you, on you, you, you. If I had two bucks in my wallet, I'd spend it all on you. Hey, listen to the same old radio show on Swat 99.9 FM. And it's still around about 25 degrees in here and I'm sweating. Maybe it doesn't help that I'm wearing long sleeves. <laughs> But boy, any shout outs, Paul? Yeah, look, I'd like to shout out to my lovely wife, Risa, and all the lines that have been working so very hard and burning midnight oil just to get Saturday night prepared and hopefully make it a great success. Oh, now, that last track was called... Uh, Two bucks. What can the Lions Club do with two bucks? Two bucks given to the Lions Club could immunise four people with measles around the world. One of our programs is Eradicate Measles. For every dollar we raise, the Bill Gates Foundation gives us another dollar. Wow. And it costs one dollar for one vaccination. So two dollars means we can vaccinate four children in third world countries against measles. Now this may be a totally unrelated question, but you see on Facebook people say that if you click like Bill Gates will give so much money do you think there's any truth in that or is the Lions Club look I can't <laughs> comment on the Facebook <laughs> but I know the program we have is a guaranteed revenue he gives us each year he matches dollar for dollar what we do all right now let's do our birthday greetings now belated happy birthday to last Saturday celebrant Paul McInnes of Blacktown <laughs> and of the Lions Club now Last Sunday, celebrants Lee Macon of Sydney and Elaine Sandy Fernandez of Blacktown. And yesterday, celebrant belated happy birthday to Tommy Tegan Bala. Thank you for your music, mate, for your music. Uh, and today's celebrant, Erlene Mora Mokaraka Lenyu of Auckland in New Zealand. Tomorrow's birthday, celebrant events, happy birthday to Raquel Darza of Ligon City. And on Thursday, Maria Norrpigans and also the League and City. And on Saturday, fans happy birthday to Jan Imperial and Jamie G. Cueto. Next track we're going to play 
is called My Shoes and it's by Rachel Fame. Rachel's from Kenters. She's an upcoming country music artist. We've had her as a guest here. But again, uh, running along the lines of what we're talking about here. Now, a lot of people, we're here in Australia, we know about what's going on overseas. Well, Rachel here is actually saying, put yourself in my shoes so you know you can see what I feel, what I'm talking about. Here we go with Rachel's My Shoes. 25 minutes to 8. You're listening to the same old radio show on Soir, 99.9 FM. That I'm over you But these stupid feelings Just keep coming through I tried telling myself We weren't meant to be But how would you feel If you were me Put yourself in my shoes See it from my point Two minutes to eight. Now, really, people, to be more compassionate, or empathetic, or whatever the right word is, you've really got to put yourself in other people's shoes. Now, overseas and local goods and monetary aid have been known to be misappropriated. Now, what checks should the club have to ensure that the aid does go to the survivors? I, I guess Paul touched on that earlier, Mitchell. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a system in place where there's a system of accountability for every dollar that we bring into the club. Mm -mm. And even when we transfer it to another club, they have that same system of accountability. Uh, for each dollar, it has to report, be reported up through, I, uh, I guess, a system of a hierarchical system, for a be lack of better words, uh, of accountability. So all of our books are open and everything's transparent, uh, unlike some other agencies and some government uh, departments, everything mm -hmm. we do is, is open and transparent to the public. 
Oh, good, good. I've known you, Richard, to be constantly sending aid to the Philippines, whether there's a disaster or not. What do you get out of it? Well, Mitch, I, I really personally, I just get uh, the gratification of knowing that I'm helping somebody help themselves. And um, most of the aid that when there isn't a disaster I send is educational stuff for, for children. Uh, because I figure if we can educate people, they can learn how to develop on their own a little bit better. And they can then uh, pay, it, pay it forward, so to speak. That goes back to the saying, I suppose, uh, give a man a fish, he'll only eat for a day. <laughs> Teach them to fish. Uh, education's really key with all these things that are happening around the world, not only just in the Philippines. Now, for those who've just joined us, we are talking to Paul McInnes and Richard Hoskins of the Lions Club and revisiting Super Typhoon Haiyan Yolanda, which happened in the Philippines. Now, like you guys, there are foreigners. So this is a combination of foreigner and stranger. This is a Filipino <laughs> slang, I guess. Mm. They continually help and promote the Philippines and its niceties and virtues. There's Aussie Chris Urbano with his cooking show, Maputin Cooking. It's white cooking. He speaks the Tagalog. And there's Canadian Kyle Channerman, whose nickname is Kulas. Kulas is a name found in the provinces. Now he is currently based in Cagayan de Oro City, that's in Mindanao. He speaks the same language that I can, Cebuana. The gentleman was a former consultant for an outdoor adventure company in Hong Kong. He visited the Philippines last year and went back to Cagayan de Oro. Now he also participated in the mission to help survivors of Super Typhoon Haiyan, known locally as Yolanda in Tacloban. It was that experience that further made him admire the resiliency of Filipinos. I guess that relates to the previous song. Uh, he put actually put himself literally in the shoes of the people from Tacloban. Now, Kulas is currently traveling spots in the Philippines that the media pushes to be wild and troublesome, like Mindanao and especially Mindanao. He wants foreigners to see what Mindanao has to offer. And lastly, Kyle hopes to affect change, which is what the Lions Club is doing through civic works. Now, to remove that one side of view in Mindanao, he says, I want people to see the real Mindanao. So far, Kulas describes the Filipino culture as a culture where family isn't only family, but friends and even strangers are family. Where smiling is genuine, giving is natural, isn't sharing is a part of everyday life. Now, what do you and Paul C. What are your personal reasons for sending help to the Philippines? I guess for myself, Mitch, well, I've uh, spent some time there as a young youngster in the military <coughs> and I've seen how people lived and I've seen both sides of the coins as I've matured a bit and went back there on holidays. And uh, I guess for me, you know, I send as an individual and I help the lines as a collective group mm -hmm. because Filipinos are quite wealthy maybe not in financial but in mm -hmm. spirit and that family and, and unity uh, and you know and when you look at that type of behaviors and look at them as a group you know I don't care how hard a man may be on mm -hmm. the outside mm -hmm. if his heart doesn't bleed to help those people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I have concerns mm -hmm. Next track we're going to play is called Can We Go Higher? And this one's by Nana Bak from New York and Croatia. Now, I don't know if uh, a lot of people still remember the Bosnia Herzegovina war in Croatia. And unfortunately, that did have something to do with religion. But at the end of the day, he said, Can we go higher? So he's practically encouraging people hey, listen, people, put yourself in other people's shoes. Let's listen, let's find out what's going on. Here we go with Can We Go Higher. 17 minutes to 8. You're listening to the same old radio show on Swire.
No rain of understanding falls to fill the well. Centuries and days have gone with the ringing of a bell. Here we are, and here we are. Can we go higher, higher, higher in our dreams? Can we go higher, higher, higher? Nitsti Dunav, Silkubi, Sinje more, Svijet u reci, Da svoj narod Hrvat ljubi. A troop of angels left and right, Watch and wait. Will it happen round the world too? A simple twist of faith And let us talk as people do A woman and man Let us shout out peace again In every, 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 every land Ten minutes to eight. You listen to same old radio show on Swa ninety nine point nine FM. Now rampant at the moment, a fear and anger directed at Mindanao due to misinformation. The whole island is painted with the same brushes, being wild and uncontrollable. Now, regardless of where these things are happening, wherever in the world, what can you suggest that people do in relation to sending humanitarian aid to the Philippines, Richard? Look. Uh I guess you have to really choose who you send it to and how you send it. Uh, you know, you really got to understand what your money's going to and who who's going to be to deliver those services. Mm-hmm. Uh, I a good example is the lines. We have no overheads. We have low cost, so all of our dollars get spent on frontline services, whatever we are, are going to do with it. So you really have to understand what the structures of different organizations are and and who delivers what and why. I don't know what is hardship. Now, a lot of people are currently affected by our current government's policies. Comparing our Australian hardship and lifestyle to those in Tacloba or the Philippines in general, are we being realistic in sending aid to the Philippines? Shouldn't we be looking at our own society here in Blackton, for example, and help our less privileged? Well, looking from the Lions Club side, we do. Most of the work we do is locally based. Each club controls their own finances. Mm-hmm. As an example, in the last board meeting, 
we approved three thousand dollars to buy a walker for a child in genocide with cerebral palsy. Excellent. We spent money on a barcode reader for a man in Layla Park with macular degeneration, so he can go shopping and speak to it. So it gives him the mobility. We have various foundations that we work. We run a house where we have an old lady with cerebral palsy lived in that we maintain and we run. These are all local programs within Blacktown. Great, great, great. Now, now we know, we all know that social services do exist in some form in the Philippines. In your opinion, what are some of the aid and social services that we also take for granted? I think Medicare is one of those. Yeah. Well, Medicare is the obvious, but I think the most important one is education. What like we mentioned before, you know, a good education. Almost overlooked. Well, over for everybody, every modern society or Western world with a good economy has a very good education system. Mm -hmm. And the other big one is Centrelink. I, I guess when you look at DPSWD in the Philippines mm -hmm. and compare it to our Centrelink and other similar services, you know, uh, we're set up quite differently and we uh, work on a tax system which is uh, quite different in the Philippines. So when we look at our systems, you know, we don't have... We have superannuation here, and we have a good retirement fund, mm -hmm. which most of the Filipinos don't have. They have to work to from from cradle to to the mm -hmm. grave, uh, where we have a retirement age, uh, and then those type of things. You know, when we talk education, uh, we all currently, no matter what the policy is, we can go and then pay later. In the Philippines, mm. you have to pay up front, and most can't afford that education and don't get it there for. That's right. Now, there is a, a system called the Social Security Services, but it's mainly for people that can work. I'm, I'm talking about people with That's office right. jobs, but yeah. not everyone works in the offices. Mm. It's, it's only a limited amount that are mm. actually office workers Correct. in the Philippines. Now, the reason I asked the question uh, is to highlight that regardless of ideology, the Superstorm Haiyan, known locally in the Philippines as Yolanda, affected everyone. Now, ideologies like Christianity and Islam, communism and democracy, all these were drowned by walls of water. It spared no one. In your opinion, what are some of the causes of unrest in the Philippines? Is it, it's no. just an opinion. I, no, I, I would like to give an opinion. Mm. Government policy obviously has a bit, history has a big part mm. to play mm. in it. Mm. What I see is uh, it's a shortage or lack of, it's, it's the basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, lack of respect for others. Mm. There may be a whole heap of other factors there. Now, as civic-minded people, how does the Lions Club engage a community like Blacktown with that kind of mix of ideologies? I'm quite proud. Our club over the last two years has drastically changed. We have probably 10 or 15 different nationalities. Mm. Or, sorry, mm. they're all Australian, but yeah, different yeah. original nationalities in the club. Yes. We have people from Africa. Heritage. Yes. yes, we have people from Africa. We have some Muslims. We have Christians. Mm. We have Chinese. We have Filipinos. We have Koreans. And they even left a yank like me and Mitch. Uh, yeah. Yes, I know you. <laughs> and, we have, and we have one or two Aussies. Yeah, who, but, who let him in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're proud that we're a multi an integrated multicultural club <laughs> but you know what letting people in for me obviously people are let in because the whole of australia believe that these people can contribute to the wellness of australia yeah. no one's going to let anyone else willy-nilly <laughs> blacktown is a mixture of cultures and mixtures of people and our club reflects that <laughs> next track we're going to play is called show me the way and this is by a band called L.A. Jam and they are from Anaheim in California. This track was mastered by Butch Montserrat of Montserrat Music Works from the Gold Coast. Now show me the way if you listen to the lyrics, so uh, well, according to your beliefs or according to your ideology, someone will show you the way. I think this world has rolled into miscue Every day as I wake up I try to walk the narrow path Still I need your hand to guide me where So 
To eight. Actually, the clock just turned out to two minutes to eight. It's nearly time for us to go. And thank you for making it a habit to listen to same old radio show every Tuesday between 7 and 8 p.m. on Swan 99.9 FM. Now, thanks, Paul and Richard, for coming over and enlightening us with what the Lions Club can do. <laughs> thank you for thank having you. us. Now, do hang around because in a few minutes, uh, Lapa and Vili from the Sands from the Kingdom of Tonga will be coming in after us. Now, before we go, Paul and Richard, complete this sentence. In a perfect world, what do you want to experience? I think one word, harmony. And you, Richard? Yeah, uh, it, it's funny because when we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. uh, we, we both thought the same thing, that harmony amongst those is different. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, and different in many ways, Mitch, whether it's religion, whether it's mm -hmm. color of our skin, whether it's the language we speak or whatever it may be, just harmony in society. That's right. And it, it's just putting yourselves in other people's mm -hmm. shoes, I guess. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. To Take Us Out is a track by Gene and Gembe from the band Imbwinda. This was arranged and mastered by Bush Montserrat. The Montserrat Music Works in the Gulf Coast. Not the Gulf Coast, the Gold Coast. Now, my... my 
mouth is going Filipino. He's going to the <laughs> F. <laughs> now, this track is called He Will Never Leave You, and this is actually the title of the charity CD. Now, thanks again for joining us. Remember, same old radio show next Tuesday between 7 and 8. Hooroo! <laughs> Plays the 70s till now, overnight until 10 a.m., and features local programs across the workday and weekends. This is Soir FM 99.9.